Okay, so now we've got our next patient on the workbench. It's a Behringer UltraDrive Pro DCX2496 loudspeaker management system. This unit was working fine, and then all of a sudden it just cut out in the middle of a function and stopped passing any audio. And also you get a strong smell of burning coming out of the units. So let's take a look and see what's happened. And straight away I get a nice strong whiff of burning. Which has come from the power supply board. Now I'm not going to power this thing up while it's connected to the processor board in case there is something wrong that's going to give out a high voltage that's going to mess up the rest of this unit. So I'm first going to take the power supply out, do a visual inspection and then do one or two checks and then power it up when not connected to the unit. Okay, before we dismantle it too far, let's actually take a look at what we've got here. Okay, so starting with the fused inlet socket. Then we've got our power supply board here, over here and our power switch. So we've got the main control board here that's got a Behringer labeled chip. And then we've got our analog devices, DSP21065L. Also got an Epson little sorry, oscillator, a few other ADCs, and on the back we've got our input board with their little op amps and two relays over there. Okay, so let's rip out the power supply. Okay, so we'll put that part away. The power supply is a lot of interest. Let's just zoom in a bit. Mm -hmm. And here we've got our power supply. Okay. If we look at the power supply, we've got a 7-8 Oh five and a seven nine no sorry seven eight one five seven nine one five regulator for plus and minus rails. Also got what looks like it's labeled as a capacitor and this attached to the side here. If we take off this cap, we've got our transformer for the switch mode supply. So I need to probe underneath, so I'm gonna have to take this thing out of its cage. So pop the clips off the two voltage regulators. Peel them a bit away from the heatsink. And then this capacitor, it's labeled as a capacitor. And see if we got four screws. And we're losing the screws all over the floor. Okay, as you can see, the power supply is a Behringer PSU 2496. And I'm looking at the capacitors and I don't see any bulging caps on the caps. Nothing underneath, no visible signs of damage. Let me just look at this capacitor over here. Oh, that is not a capacitor. Ah, I saw, I saw the label there that said, let me see if I can get in the front shot. I saw the label there that said C5, but I couldn't see it was actually IC5, which is 
hiding away under this little boot and as you can see under IC5 there's definite scorch marks and this IC5 is a top 245YN TOP 245YN so let's get the data sheet and see what that part is okay so if you look at the data sheet here this is a top 245Y which is in open frame it's 85 watt at 230 volts flyback switcher control IC okay so this is basically a typical flyback switch mode power supply so there's your main controller over there that's the one that's got little marks under it and there is our opto isolator to give the feedback of the voltage few capacitors and your cert, your EMI filtering on the input side here and a mob over here but now I've got scorch marks under this top 245 so I think I need to pull that out and then see what the story with it is okay let's just check the transformer see if our transformer is still good Just taking a few resistances, it should not be open circuits. There's our transformer up there. Okay. Okay, so we are getting resistance readings. And on the output side, yeah. Okay, so it looks like our transformer is good. Let's do a check of the diodes in circuits. So that's infinite. One for nine. Normally, if there's a fault the diode, with the diodes, they would have gone short circuits. And it all looks okay, yeah? Another diode here. The diodes look fine. Okay, that looks fine, so let's work on cleaning up this section. That looks all fine, so let's work on cleaning up this section of the board and then we'll see what's happening. Mm, still got a pin in there. No, that little pin doesn't want to come out. Okay, so I'm just cleaning out these holes nicely, getting all the pins out of the way. Now I'm going to do something that people don't really like. There we go. I don't know if you can see through all five of those holes. Oh, okay, you can see through all six of those holes. They are now clean. So let's carry on. Just busy working on a mirror image on the camera, so let's carry on cleaning here. Using a Q tip and just some thinners that I had lying around.
need to do a proper cleaning to get rid of all that carbon. No, don't have to worry about that bridge because that is comment. Okay. Okay, so now that I've cleaned the board off, I can't see any shorting out there. So I think the next step is I'm going to order a replacement one or two of these switching ICs from my regular supplier, which only costs 45 South African Rand, which is not bad at all. I think we'll also go ahead and replace the capacitors at the same time while we're working on this board. And you'll see that in the next video. So if you like this video, subscribe, hit the little bell icon, and then you'll be notified as soon as we put up the next video, which is when we get this thing going. Thank you.